Hello, Dr. Shannon Shea for the last of the condition motivating operations. This one is the CMOS or surrogate condition motivating operation. And real quick, in case this is the first one you're watching, uh, condition motivating operation is one that we have learned or paired um, as opposed to unconditioned motivating operations, which uh, come with basically all mammals and that you're born with. So if you don't eat, there will be a motivating operation in place to make food more valuable. That's the value altering effect. And to engage in all behaviors that have previously resulted in you getting food, behavior altering effect. Um, so that's the very short version of CMA, CMOs versus UMOs. We already went over transitive and reflexive. This is surrogate. Um, it's an odd one. It's not referenced that often. Um, there's not a ton of research on it. It can be a little bit mentalistic because it relies kind of like on inner drives and um, a connection you can't quite experimentally test as far as I know. But uh, aside from all of that, what it is, is if you have a stimulus that has been paired with <coughs> excuse me, it was previously neutral, um, so unconditioned, and then it was paired with reinforcement when other motivating operations were in place, it can take on the property of the stimulus <clears throat> itself, hence surrogate. So uh, the example Jack Michael gave was if you eat lunch every single day at noon and you look up at the clock and you see it's 12, you might not be particularly hungry, like you might not have those private sensations or hear your stomach growling or any of those usual um, indicators that you wanna go find food. But if you look at the clock, it's a temporal relation and it's a little mentalistic, uh, you'll probably say, oh, it's time for me to eat and engage in behavior as though you actually were hungry, uh, whether or not you experience sensations associated with hunger. So. It'll have that same value altering effect, making food more reinforcing and behavior altering effect, uh, meaning that you're going to go engage in behaviors that have previously resulted in food. Uh, some other examples of this are, let's say my partner and I on Saturday nights always uh, watch a movie and then get intimate, right? And say I wasn't particularly in the mood and I'm kind of grumpy and uh, it's just not on my mind. And then I realized, oh, it's 7 p.m. on Saturday. So probably intimacy is coming soon. And then it might create that establishing operation, right? Like I might engage in behaviors that have resulted in um, having sex before. Um, and I might seek them out when, you know, without noticing the day and time, those surrogate motivating operations, it wouldn't have happened otherwise. But again, this is mentalistic and hard to test for. So it is kind of the least referenced one, the least used one when you like read behavior plans and stuff like that. But that, that's really what it is. It's a stimulus that's surrogately taking on the properties of an, another stimulus and then you will act in ways as if that stimulus was present. So I hope that helps with surrogate condition motivating operations. And uh, if there's anything else you want to know about, let me know.